Hello and welcome once again to another Board of Education meeting recap, this time for April 2020. I'm J.D. Harden, your host, Executive Director of Communications and Public Relations for Henry County Schools, joined here with Superintendent Mary Elizabeth Davis. Hey, J.D., and uh, welcome. Thank you guys for joining us as always. As you can tell, we're coming to you from a different venue this time uh, from each of our respective uh, houses, uh, straight to yours. And uh, we're glad that you could join in with us to hear all the things that our, our board took action on in the month of April. Again, you know, just because we're not in our boardroom doesn't mean that the work stops. Our board of education members have been doing a tremendous amount of work behind the scenes, as has our entire school system, to keep operations up and running. And of course, to make sure that we are able to deliver a high level of academic uh, support uh, and instruction for all of our students and their families. And, you know, there was, uh, it, it is a little bit of a different time that we're in right now, uh, Mary Elizabeth, and, and I know that uh, you'd probably like to address our families at this moment. Thanks, JD, and you're right. Uh, certainly unprecedented times for our country uh, and our community. And uh, really, as we have now been uh, operating remotely for more than a month, it's an opportunity to acknowledge that uh, our community's strength is really revealing itself. Uh, the role that our public education plays in the lives of our children, our families, and our community has never been more prevalent. And I'm certainly proud of the tremendous effort of the employees of the Henry County Schools. And I'm also proud of the tremendous effort of our partners, our families, our students, and our community. Uh, really, in this moment, we have learned that uh, we aren't becoming strong through this chapter. We have been strong. And because of that strength, we are thriving as a community, and we are continuing to get better. But that being said, operating in these unprecedented times has required a different approach to our work, approach to serving and partnering with our families, and the first order of business that we had at our board meeting was to pro provide the Board of Education and our public a continuity briefing. This briefing happened to be the second of a series of briefings in which our commitment to communicating publicly the infrastructure that needs to be designed as we've made this transition out of normal operating conditions and into remote operating conditions um, is, is serious. And I would invite you to visit the Henry County Schools website so that you can view volume one of the instructional and operational continuity briefing and now volume two of the instructional and operational continuity briefing. There is where you get a snapshot of all of the academic decisions that have been made, all of the operational continuity plans, the meal service um, and, and uh, meal curbside pickup, all of the family and student support services, our technical infrastructure, and all of the resolutions to improving that infrastructure for our learners and our teachers. All of that is documented for your review, and I would encourage you to take a moment to examine that on the school system website. So JD, I think we kicked off with uh, an acknowledgement that our Board of Education's governance is essential in a time like this, that the work of the organization has never been more deeply coordinated, and we would invite all of our communities to take a look at the details in our briefings now available on the website. Thanks so much. The uh, information, as, as she shared, is readily available on our website, and we can't uh, encourage you enough to, to search there first for many of your, your questions, of course, in this unprecedented time um, when we don't have access to one another in a face-to-face -face setting for those questions to be answered. We know that uh, you know information readily at your fingertips is something that's important to you, and that's why we've gone to great lengths to to be able to you know populate our website with uh, a lot of the answers to many of the questions that you all have been asking. And of course, if there's something that you can't find there, we still encourage you to reach out via email to either your teacher or someone within your respective school first, um, and then you can also uh, you know reach out to you know, our administrators at the uh, district office to make sure that we can get your answers, uh, you know, the answers to your questions as quickly as possible. So we appreciate your patience working through this new uh, communication channel. Uh, of course, in order to keep things running, uh, we have to talk about the budget. And the budget was a uh, topic that our, was brought up before our board. Uh, of course, a, a review as always of our, our previous month's uh, budget reports is a part of our 
you know, our study session. But then, of course, super, or, excuse me, our chief financial officer, Christy Willis, was able to provide an update to our, um, our 2021 FY21 budget planning process. So, uh, Mary Elizabeth, could you uh, share a little bit with our audience about how that process is going in this new uh, reality that we're, we're going through right now? Yes, thank you, JD. And, and certainly uh, it's important to start by acknowledging that April is the month that the Board of Education typically takes action to approve the tentative budget for the following school year. Uh, because of the disruption to our legislative season, um, we have now uh, made a recommendation to the Board of Education to delay that official action. Um, and that delay will now take place in June assuming that we learn more through our uh, general assembly in the coming weeks and months. But that being said, there is still preparation necessary for our coming school year. And we were able to examine the projected revenue, uh, begin to discuss what type of impact COVID-19 is going to have on school system revenue, not only here in Henry County, but of course across the state and nation. And we were able to begin to uh, talk about how we will mitigate any of those uh, uncertainties as they surface in preparation for a, a new school year. So let me start by uh, actually mentioning that the federal government stimulus package included dollars for local school systems. And Henry County Schools is a recipient of CARES Act dollars. Uh, we will be receiving $6 million to support the emergency operations that have uh, been incurred during this, uh, this season. It will give us the opportunity to fund uh, learning recovery options in the summer and headed into next fall. It will also give us the opportunity to uh, recover some of the funds that have been designated towards providing emergency operations such as food service, as well as technical support that would otherwise not have been uh, accrued in, in our given year. So the CARES Act dollars is gonna be a great bridge as we head from our FY20 season into our FY20 season. But JD, on top of that, we talked a lot about some of the previous decisions that our Board of Education has made that is going to serve to strengthen and stabilize our fiscal conditions as we head into a new school year. You know, three years ago, our Board of Education was clear that deficit spending needed to be prevented, and we actually stopped a $12 million deficit expenditure uh, in, in that fiscal year. Last year, as our budget grew, the Board of Education designated $2.5 million to be added to our already very stable reserves. Additionally, $839,000 were received by the district for the state health benefit holiday in June of 2018. Well, those dollars, excuse me, in June of 2019, those dollars were added to the reserves on top of the 2.5 million. As we have prepared for the FY21 budget, we had anticipated that stabilizing responsibility to continue to create a strong infrastructure to improve the learning outcomes of kids. And we believe we are positioned to continue doing that. I have to give a lot of credit to the Board of Education for their focus on improving systems and processes for student reporting, as well as, as really requiring a high percentage of our budget be dedicated to reserves. Uh, we're not going to have to get ready because we have been ready for whatever types of conditions may be changing for our community. So as you can tell, there was a lot of great discussion about you know, the all important budget that is one of the main responsibilities of our Board of Education and they continue to do a, a great job of being good fiscal stewards of your tax money here in Henry County. And that, that not only goes for the general budget, but that also goes for East Bloss. And of course it was the East Bloss uh, a few years ago that uh, was one of the instrumental figures or one of the instrumental pieces that helped us you know, provide a one-to-one -one technology uh, you know, opportunity for our district that is now ensuring that learning continues in Henry County Schools and a big kudos and thank you to our board uh, at that time and of course the leadership of the district to make sure that that happens uh, and that now we are actually, you know, uh, the beneficiaries of uh, at this current moment. So we do appreciate, uh, you know, that forward thinking at that time. Moving on from the budget, we had uh, two calendars, you know, we have to start preparing for uh, the coming years. Uh, regardless of what that looks like now, we want to make sure that our, our school calendars are prepared 
uh, for the 2021-22 and 2022-23 school years. Uh, Dr. Carl Knowlton, our chief of staff, was able to present both of these calendar proposals to the board, and both of them contain 178 uh, instructional days for our students, 190 days for our, our teachers, and uh, we, we will start both school years kind of in a midweek scenario in the first week of August in both calendars and finish up that Friday uh, before Memorial Day each year. We still are able to keep all of the breaks, the traditional breaks that you've come to, to know and love. Uh, for, for our school system. And, uh, but one, one of the things that we have added this year uh, as a proposal, and we solicit your feedback on this, is we are trying to work in some uh, parent-teacher conference days. And we've designated three days in October for this to be accomplished. Uh, you'll be able to see them on the calendars. They uh, fall kind of that second or uh, third week uh, for October. So take a look at that and give us your feedback. Both calendars are posted under our public review and uh, comment section on our website and you'll be able to find them there and give us your valuable feedback. The board is slated to take action on those uh, calendar proposals at next month's meeting. So be on the lookout for that. Now, segueing into our next item, uh, we had a uh, code of conduct review, annual review by uh, Chief uh, Le uh, School Leadership Officer, Mr. Kirk Trum, and uh, Mary Elizabeth, I believe that there was uh, some uh, new information that they're working on as we move into the next school year. Thank you, JD. Yes, our Code of Conduct's annual review is also underway, but of course it didn't just start here in the month of April. It started long before this moment, and uh, Mr. Shrum was able to share some details about the solicitation of feedback from many different stakeholder groups, including teachers and parents and students. Um, we had a focus group with our bus drivers as well as community members, and uh, allowing there to be some real dialogue about the consistent practices from school to school and really generated just the right levels of, uh, of improvement to that code of conduct document. And so that code of conduct document will now be out on public review, uh, also on our district website. And uh, we would welcome your uh, perusal and your feedback uh, during this time. Now I will specifically point out that there is an inclusion of uh, vaping as a more clearly defined infraction in our code of conduct with more uh, detailed uh, consequences associated with that infraction given the national public health epidemic related to uh, uh, choices uh, of vaping. And so our board has been very interested in protecting student health and really promoting good decision making. And so you will see that as a significant change in our code of conduct in preparation for the next school year. Um, aside from that, you really see just continued imp and continuous improvement at play as we know we are in a season of constantly getting better. And so the code of conduct would be a, a great place to review and provide your feedback. The board will be scheduled to take action on that code of conduct to adopt it at our May board meeting. Thank you for that update, of course, on our Code of Conduct review. As uh, Mary Elizabeth mentioned, we hope that you will take the time to visit our website and provide some feedback uh, on your thoughts on this very important um, you know, process or guide for our school system. Now, what has become uh, customary for our board meetings here of late is the Comprehensive Policy Review Update by Dr. Knowlton. He was able to once again provide a new set of policies for consideration by the board and of course consideration by you and uh, those policies have been placed out on our website again for review and comment and we'll be there for the next month or excuse me until our next board meeting I should say which is May the 11th. If you have thoughts please get them in uh, quickly so the board can consider those when making their decisions and then what what transition from our informational items over to our business items were the policies that were provided um, before the board last month and of course did uh, solicit some feedback and garner some feedback from you and the community. Our board did take action as a part of the consent agenda to approve those unanimously. So that's another set of our um, board policies that have been updated and you will see those changes reflected very soon. Now, part of our business meeting was uh, the opportunity to you know, kind of have a new inspiration we're accustomed to having you know, students being there with us in the board meetings to be able to provide that, that inspiration. But we had a little bit of a different uh, scenario this time around. Uh, Mary Elizabeth, how about you share with our, our audience about the, uh, the inspiration that they received during this month's meeting? 
That's right. Our board has a tradition of starting the business of the board with students at the center. And we didn't think now was a time to discontinue that tradition. So because the Henry County community is embracing our Art of Hope digital art exhibit, we did a tour of the fine artwork um, and performances of our students across Henry County Schools. And I would invite you to not only visit the district website and click on our Art of Hope digital art exhibit, but you too should be participating and submit your art, either in performance or in visual arts, to be a part of that, uh, of that digital exhibit. I mean, honestly, the words, the images created by the young people in Henry County in this season of our community are profound. They are exactly what we need to feel inspired, optimistic, and ready to stay strong together. So that is how we kicked off our business meeting for the evening. So JD, let me turn it back to you. So of course, you know, you know, there will be uh, more art to come. There's, you know, as as mentioned, there's music and there's uh, uh, visual arts, and and so we'll keep populating that as as the school year continues. Uh, and who knows, this will probably be one of our longstanding. Uh, features for our community. It's brought a lot of uh, uh, pride uh, for the, the students who have pr provided the work and then of course those who are receiving that work. Uh, it has given a lot of hope to those all throughout our community. Two items that were also covered under our business uh, items you know during the study session and of course voted on by our board members would be that uh, of some special purchases for uh, bus equipment moving into to the next school year. Something that we really feel is going to move our, our bus and transportation operations to the next level. So Mary Elizabeth, how about a little bit of update on that? Sure, the two business actions uh, started with a recommendation that we uh, replace our current GPS system with an updated and new system and software solution for transportation services. Not only will this purchase result in a new GPS in each one of our buses on our bus fleet, but it actually will also include a software uh, component that provides families uh, access on their phone to the location and arrival time of their child's bus. Uh, it's called the Where Here Comes the Bus app. And so we uh, were able to proceed with this recommendation and the board approved unanimously the uh, purchase of this new solution. And it really is a replacement purchase because we will now be able to discontinue the funds expended on our on our uh, on our out, outgoing GPS service, uh, and and that was the first of two business items. The second of the two business items happened to be um, a purchase for updating the cameras on our buses. Uh, this purchase will allow us to go from two cameras on our 72 passenger buses to five, three cameras on our 90 passenger buses to now six. And our special education buses will go from two cameras to five as well. So this is a much needed purchase. It was already prepared for in our SWASH project and it will uh, rely on SWASH uh, funding in order to secure those cameras. Both of those purchases made in hopes that we'll be ready to roll with them, no pun intended, here in the new school year. Of course, again, you know, these purchases speak to the importance of the East Bloss dollars that uh, you, the voters of Henry County, the citizens of Henry County approved for us to be able to use uh, to, for, for expenditures just like this. Of course, we can't use it for personnel, but, you know, the buildings that you see students learning in, the technology that's at their fingertips and items such as the transportation and, and you know, all of its functions are uh, possible thanks to East Bloss dollars, and it really um, makes it, uh, you know, our school system stand out above the rest. So we appreciate, uh, again, your continued support of that particular uh, program and funding mechanism. You know, moving on from there, that was really uh, a wrap for, for that um, meeting, for our business session. Of course, in this new time, uh, we're, we're working through this together. And uh, if you haven't been able to, to see those meetings, they are being broadcast live now on our YouTube channel. We have a Henry County Schools YouTube channel. Um, those two meetings plus the very first virtual meeting that we had, remote meeting that we had um, from the, the beginning of April are, are all housed on that page and you're able to go back and look at them at any time. They'll also be on our website, so you'll be able to find them there too. But moving into the, uh, the May meeting on May 11th, we will have again our four o'clock study session, our seven o'clock 
business session. Both of those will be um, shown live on our YouTube channel. So if you're interested in seeing the action of the board, we hope you'll tune in for both of those broadcasts. Uh, and if you can't catch them live, they'll definitely be there for, for them to be recorded. Uh, as always, uh, you know, we, we appreciate you working through this, this new normal with us. Um, none of us knows at this moment when it will all end, when things will go back to normal if they'll go back to, to fully being normal. But our goal is to really move our school system and prepare our school system to be ready to go when we are given the green light to offer on-site instruction back in the classrooms. And uh, Mary Elizabeth, you've done a, a great deal of communicating with our families about this and about the things that will transpire over the summer. And here's a, you know, another opportunity for us to be able to share that with them once again. Yes, that's right. Uh, and you know, JD, as we uh, navigate these uh, weeks heading into the close of school year, uh, none of this looks like we would have imagined on that very first day of school in August. You know, the, the experiences we have in April and May in our schools tend to be some of the most memorable experiences that we actually carry with us for our lifetime. And you know, that's not lost on our team as we prepare to fill in this school year strong. Whether it be traditions or events or, uh, or celebrations or just closing out activities, uh, they're meaningful to all of us. And our hearts are with students who feel like they are just too uh, distant from that experience we would all want in these closing weeks. So we've committed to really talking about a lot of postponing a lot of opportunity to reschedule, graduations and, and prom and senior activities being rescheduled for the end of June and, and with backup dates at the end of July. We're, we're already talking about starting the new school year by ending this school year well. How do we reconvene in, in the classes that we didn't get to say goodbye to, with the teachers that we didn't get to say goodbye to, with the adults in our, in our buildings, and and doing the right recognition and celebration for a job well done and, and still enjoying some of those traditions we had looked forward to as we maybe graduated from fifth grade and graduated from eighth grade. And of course, to our class of 2020, everyone believes you deserve to be celebrated the most of all times, the class of all classes. And we're really looking for ways to see that come to fruition because in Henry County, the student experience matters deeply. And we are leading with expectations that we can deliver. And we hope to be able to do that as we're given word by public authorities and public health officials that it's safe to do so. You know, as we head into this last couple of weeks, I really think it's a chance for us to finish strong, to show to the, to the country, to the world really, that we value education, we value the relationships, that are formed through education, whether it be with our classmates, whether it be with our, our, our teachers, the adults in our, in our building, whether it be through our, uh, one another as colleagues, and that truly the role education plays as the thread that unifies an entire community can be relied upon in the great times and in the unexplainable times. I would just like to thank all of, I would first of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Davis and the leadership team teachers and staff and students for a job well done. And you have to have amazing people to do amazing things. And Henry County is, is proof of that. It, it truly takes a village and we've never known that quite like we do now. So I'm very grateful for all of those who have wrapped around our students to ensure that whatever normalcy we can hold on to is there. We have the most incredible employees in Henry in, in Henry County Schools. Um, I believe more so than any other school district. Just like everybody else, I just want to say how proud I am uh, to be a part of this team and just to have the best employees. I mean, there's so many people uh, on the front lines working, um, but there's just as many that are working behind the scenes that aren't on the front lines that are making it possible for this operation to happen. I hope that you and your family are well. I hope you are healthy. And I hope you know that Henry County Schools stands ready to assist and support you in any possible way. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us if there's something we can do. In the meantime, until the next time we can be together, you're on our thoughts and in our minds. 
And JD, let me turn it over to you to wrap it up. Thank you again, uh, Mary Elizabeth, for, for those words. Uh, of course, if you haven't been able to uh, hear or see uh, many of her messages, we have all of those uh, on our website as well. And the words have, have uh, rung true for so many people and, and really impacted a lot of our families in very uh, touching ways, and, and especially for that class of 2020. And we know that uh, you know, whether you're a you know, senior about to embark on this, this new journey outside of Henry County Schools, or if you're a family who's uh, in the midst of, of your school career, if you're that family that's watching, uh, looking for hope as you move into uh, becoming uh, one of our new students, uh, whether it be in kindergarten or jumping in at one of these other grades, uh, we value your trust. For those who have uh, been with us, uh, we thank you for your trust. Uh, and as always, we thank you for tuning in for another Board of Education meeting recap. As always, J.D. Harden here with Superintendent Mary Elizabeth Davis. We thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you next month. As is the case with most board meetings, there's a lot more information that you're able to witness being there in person or watching the full version on demand that we're unable to bring to you here in this very short board meeting recap. The links to those presentations and videos can be found in the description section directly below this video.